thought about the issue that the master was dealing with, she spoke up. There come times in the life of the believer when we need to speak up and take authority over the problems that are going on in our life. Stop allowing the enemy to have free course to run my house. Stop allowing the enemy to have free course to run my children. Stop allowing the enemy to have free course to run my spouse, to run my job. But to speak up and say uh, that there is a healing that needs to take place. Uh, and I know where you can get your healing from. Uh, Got to understand here that it could have been uh, that she could have been uh, killed for speaking up. Uh, because they might not want to hear what she said. Uh, but it just so happened that she spoke up at the right time. She spoke up in a time when Naaman uh, knew that he had to do something about what he was going through. Uh, so we see here uh, that when she speaks up and she says it, uh, he runs and tells the king, he said, king, uh, uh, this servant has told me about a man that's in Israel that can heal me of this problem. Uh, anybody in here know that sometimes we need to be healed, uh, we need to be delivered, we need to be set free uh, because the thing that we're dealing with has just been in our life for just too long. I've been dealing with this issue for too long. I've been carrying around the baggage for just too long. And if I really want to get to where God wants me to be, I gotta let some things go. And in order to get to what God wants me to do, I gotta let some people Ah, God, I thank you. Y'all ain't got to get with me, but I know one thing. God is in this place. Ah, God, I bless you. We see now that even though Naaman had a problem that could have caused him to be taken out of his place of authority, he could have lost his position. Ah, people don't want to talk about losing position. Ah, they want to keep the position. They want to keep the look like they did something. They want to keep the appearance that they're doing something. It ain't no anointing in it. He could have lost his position. He could have lost his title. Uh, he could have been cast away uh, never to be used again uh, this situation got desperate enough uh, that he was willing to push past his comfort zone uh, every once in a while as believers in God uh, we need to push past our comfort zone uh, yes it's nice and cool uh, to have people that's around you uh, to have your buddies that always got your back uh, but every once in a while uh, you need to depend on God to have my back uh, I don't care if you don't tell me you praying for me. As long as God is on my side, I know that everything, somebody need to give God praise. Ah, he, got, he got to the point where he was desperate enough uh, to listen to the, 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 the talking of a little child. Uh, he was desperate enough uh, to take what he heard. Uh, he didn't know for sure if this child was lying to him. Uh, he didn't know if what she was saying was the truth or a lie. But he was desperate enough uh, to take her word uh, and take it to the king. Uh, and the king had enough faith in Naaman. Uh, it didn't say he had enough faith in God. Uh, he had enough faith faith in Naaman to say, uh, if you say it's going to work that way, uh, let me send a letter down there so they know we ain't playing about this thing. Uh, every once in a while, you need to have faith enough in the God and the people that are around you. Uh, stop looking for God. Stop looking for God to come down out of heaven and speak to you. Uh, if he's speaking to the people around you, that's why I said sometimes you need to change the folks that are around you. If you can't trust that God is moving in their life, you need to let them Negroes go. Got folk around you, you don't know if they praying, if they got a prayer life, if they fast. You don't know anything, but they're your boys. We just cool like that. Uh, I would rather have people around me that when I'm going through problems, when they say they're praying for me, I can feel the effects of their prayer. When they say, I've been, I've been, I've had you on my mind, and I've been praying, I know that they ain't just saying that just to look like somebody that's deep. And you know, you got some people that want to look deep, and ain't deep as a puddle. It ain't rained in three days. It ain't deep at all. You got to understand that you need to not look like you're deep. I don't care if you walk in here. Uh, uh, Y'all hear me when I'm saying, hear this in the spirit. Don't nobody try. I don't care if you walk in here smelling like three-day-old cornbread. As long as you got power in God. 
We have to understand we need to stop looking at people how they dress themselves up because people are a dressed up mess. Pharisees looked, they looked the part of having knowledge of God. But when Jesus came in, they didn't even know who Jesus was. They had robes that were in, embedded with nice tassels and they looked like they had some authority. And when they prayed, they prayed and they made loud prayers that really went nowhere but up to the roof and came back down. I don't care if you don't say nothing but Jesus, as long as it gets... I might not be able to conjugate my verbs. I might not be able to uh, do the right thing and say the right But as long as the word get to where God is. Naaman, I got to get somewhere. Y'all stop messing with me. Uh, Naaman was, he was taking the word of a child uh, that was a servant that was taken into captivity. She could have been lying trying to get her freedom. Uh, ain't nobody ever talked about that. Uh, she could have been lying just trying to get somebody killed. Uh, or she could have been set them up. Uh, but every once in a while uh, somebody will come into your life uh, that will tell you something that will be the best blessing in your life uh, that will set up the greatest victory in your life. Uh, and if we don't know how to trust people, uh, we will never get to the victory God had intended for us to get to in our life. Uh, we don't trust one another enough. Uh, we don't have one another's back enough. Uh, as soon as we hear something, uh, we run and tell everybody else. Uh, as soon as we think something, we run and tell everybody else. Uh, but when was the last time uh, you had somebody on your mind? Uh, when was the last time uh, you took the time to pray ye one for the other? Uh, like the word of God tells us to. Bible says here that uh, Naaman went, and when he went down to Israel, he went down with a lot of form and fashion. Said he got several changes of clothes. He got... He got chariot. He went down in great authority, trying to show his position in this title. Telling him right now that position and title don't mean nothing if God ain't in you. Ah, uh, you can have the position, you can have the title, and still nothing is going on. I would rather be nobody in the authority of God dwelling in me than to be somebody and God ain't moving. We got to understand that we need to look past what the title says, but what did God say about me? I might not ever get my name picked up in lights, but as long as God is with me, he's more than the whole world against me. We have to understand that Naaman went down and he went down looking like he was somebody special, even though he needed something from God. He was desperate enough uh, that he needed to go down to get his healing uh, but he wanted to come in his own way uh. sometimes when we need to be healed uh, we want to come in our own way uh. we want to come in a special line uh. we want to get called out by the prophet uh. we want to have God to call my name uh, and say thus and so over my life uh. but every once in a while uh, even if they don't call my name uh, I know that no matter what's going on uh, that my miracle is waiting right here for me uh. even if you never call my name uh, God said uh, where the spirit of the Lord is uh, that is liberty uh, so I'm liberated from my problem uh, I'm liberated from my situation uh, I'm liberated from everything the devil meant for evil uh, because God said uh, what the devil meant for evil uh, he would turn it around for our good uh, clap your hands and give him praise What you got to understand is the devil wanted to kill you. He wanted to take you out before you were even able to get a relationship with God. There were some things that you went through that people didn't even know about. That you ain't told nobody else about. That God knows about. But the devil meant to take you out in that thing. But because God was on your side, somebody should have ran right there. But because God was on your side, because everything that God said over your life, he said he was going to allow it to happen, is the reason why the devil couldn't kill you. But what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Not stronger in me, but I'm stronger in God. I believe him more. I trust him more. I got more faith in him because he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Clap your hands and give him praise. You gotta understand. Naaman went down there trying to look like so. 
try to be special so that the man of God would know who he was. But you gotta understand something. It doesn't matter if people know my name. The main thing is, does God know my name? Is God looking out for me? People can look out for you and make a mess of your life. By trying to please folks, trying to make them happy, we can make ourselves to be in a depressed situation. Amen. Trying to please other folk. Amen. Never asking God, God, what would you have me to do? But thinking about what would keep them happy. I look at some people and I'm just talking. Y'all don't respond to this. I'm just talking now. It's good what I'm going to say, but I'm just talking. There are some people that have gotten into relationships because others said that would be a nice man. That would be a nice woman for you. That's the one you need to marry right there. And the whole time that you're in this relationship, you didn't desire to, or you're trying to spend the rest of your life with this person, and they don't want to have nothing to do with you. All because somebody else is trying to live your life for you. We have to understand that if God don't speak over a person, I don't need to let nobody tell me what God ain't told me. What that should happen is God should have already spoken to me so they should affirm the word that God has already confirmed in me. Somebody write that down if you didn't get it. Should affirm the word that God has already confirmed. Because if God already confirmed it, when they come, they're going to bring affirmation of what God has already said to me. It shouldn't sound new to me. Had, had, had I not already known that God had anointed me to preach, when others would tell me the Lord said you're going to preach, it would have shocked me and I'd be like, man, go ahead. But every time somebody brought the word of God to me, I already knew, so I wouldn't say nothing. I wouldn't say yay or nay. I just sit there and look at who, been, who you've been talking to. But Naaman was sitting right here and he came down to the man of God. And we get ready to get up out of here came down to the man of God looking the part of somebody with authority. And when the prophet didn't even come out of his dwelling to see where he was and to see about it, didn't even come to look at it, to see what a problem was, what a leprosy was, didn't come, as he said, he didn't come to lay his hands on him and call out the name of his God. He didn't do none of that. I was expecting for him to do that. Sometimes we need to confuse the enemy. Ooh, Jesus. Every once in a while, we need to confuse the enemy. You always come in here, and you're jumping and running. Every once in a while, somebody needs to just be down and praying and asking God to move by his power. Move by his spirit. God, I thank you. I told you before, the problem with the church that was in Laodicea was they were neither hot nor cold, but they were lukewarm. Ah, God, we have gotten to the place in our relationship when we've gotten lukewarm in our relationship with God. We ain't hot, we ain't cold, but we're lukewarm. We don't even have the authority to cast out a headache anymore. And we're sitting right here acting like we got something from God. And God is saying, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. We have to understand we need to get back to the first love. We need to get back to the first love and that is the love of God. We got to get back to where God wanted us to be. The problem that Adam had when he had messed up in sin is they had a meeting place where God would meet him all the time. Where Adam left where he was supposed to be and that's the reason why God said wait a minute you ain't where you supposed to be. The reason why we ain't being blessed like we supposed to be blessed and I need y'all to hear me right now is because we not where we supposed to be. you really want to see God bless you, get where you're supposed to be. Uh, Don't worry about who else decided they don't want to come on Sunday. You be here and you be on time and you be happy to be at church. Walking in here looking spiritually depressed. Uh, Looking like like you just want to give up. I know we all going through problems. That's the thing I was using desperate for. Uh, We look at the definition of desperate. Desperate is defined as having an urgent need or desire. An example would be desperate for attention. 
How many know people that are desperate for attention? That will do anything to get somebody's attention. Another definition for desperate is leaving or having little or no hope. Very serious or dangerous, a desperate illness where you need deliverance from what you're going through. We have to be desperate enough that I'm going to push past the folks looking at me. I'm going to push past my friends and family talking about me. I'm going to push past all the lies that people are. I'm desperate enough to receive what God has for me. I'm going to not worry about what they said. Because one thing I did come to realize, if they talked about Jesus, Lord God, help us. They're going to talk about us too. So why do you get so excited and overwhelmed when folk begin to put your name out there? You need to be celebrating God because they talked about him and he still didn't open his mouth and he still died for their sins. The same ones that were crying out, and I know next Sunday is Easter Sunday, the same ones on this Sunday, Palm Sunday, were crying out, Hosanna. The same ones turned around the very next week and said, crucify The same ones that he had healed, the same ones that had eaten of the two fish and five loaves are the same ones that cried out, crucify, give us Barabbas. So why are we so surprised when our friends turn their back on us? Why are we so surprised when our family don't support us the way we think they should support us? If they forsake Jesus, what makes you think they're not going to forsake you? If they let him go, what makes you think they're not going to let you go? Oh, God. If they talked about and turned their back, Peter said to him, I will never leave you. He said, I'm going to be with you. If you die, I'm going to die with you. When they came and got him, Peter, he When, when they told him, you one of them. Your language gives you away. He began to curse. I don't know what you're talking about. How dare you say these things and make these accusations to me. But he going to be with them. So why are you surprised when you're out here on the island by yourself? God, I thank you. That's when God can begin to speak to you when you ain't got nobody else whispering in your ear. You ain't got nobody else telling you lies. You ain't got nobody else trying to feed you information that you really don't need to know. Sometimes we get a little too nosy in the church. Oh, we want to hear about everything that's going on in everybody else's life. And we only need to hear what God is saying. And the reason why we can't hear him is because everybody else is making noise, but God is speaking he's speaking and we can't hear what he's saying because it's so much noise but God is speaking he wants us to know that he wants us to be desperate enough to come into here the house of God and say even if no one else comes to the altar I'm laying down at your feet Jesus because I want to receive the blessings in my life I'm not, I'm not worried about who talks about why are they laying down at the altar. You need to lay down at the altar. There are some things that all of us are dealing with. There are some problems that we all are facing. Mine may not be yours, but guess what? Yours are just as severe as mine. Just as trying as what I'm going through. No, my children are not in jail, but I may be going through some situations in my health that you have never seen in your life. There are some that are dealing with problems in work, some dealing with problems in marriage, problems in the home, wondering how they're going to make it. Because every time I turn around, something else is hitting me. Every time I think I'm going to get out of this, here comes something else to bombard me. Seems like I can't even breathe without having problems just come at me, come at me. And they wonder why people don't get their healing. It's because we are spiritually overwhelmed and we're not giving it to the authority who can handle all our problems. Thinking we can handle it on our own. Thinking we got our big boy drawers on. 
Yep, I said it. Knowing we need somebody 